today we're going to go over eFuture course books and kind of give you some general tips and ideas on how to teach them. All right. So going to briefly introduce the course books to you guys today. Um, for those that joined Sue's webinar last week, um, I know she did kind of briefly introduce the course books. So just going to go over the course books again, a little bit more in depth, as well as uh, go through a quick lesson walkthrough. Um, just show the differences and, and off, off, uh, obviously some similarities between the books and kind of go into some teaching tips and ideas and uh, other things that uh, you can take with you into your classroom, okay? So a lot of these uh, can be adapted. You know, I know a lot of us are teaching online at the moment. So I'm trying to give some ideas as well on how you can adapt your lessons to the online classroom, okay? So we try to, you know, help you guys as much as we can, given the times, all right? So uh, let's get started. So are there any attendees? Do any of you actually use eFuture course books? And can you name them? Does anyone know the names of our course books? It's kind of a review for um, Sue's webinar last week. So if you remember any of those from last week, can you write it in the chat? See if you know. Okay, you can go good. Hand in hand is one of them. Good. Got a lot of hand in hand. Smart English. Very good. We got a teaching hand in hand. So we have Smart English here. Smart English was the first course book from eFuture. And then we have Hand in Hand, which is the second one. And we actually have a new course book coming out later this year. Is, did anyone join Sue's webinar that remembers the name? We have a new, web, a new course book coming out in just a little bit of time later this year. So our new course book is actually going to be Let's Smile. Okay, so we have a new course book in Let's Smile that will be coming out very soon as well. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper into these books. So it's good that you guys know them. Um, I'm trying not to spend too much time on the introduction if you guys know them. So let's go over the focus and components of each series. So the focus, so with uh, Smart English, Smart English was the first course book from eFuture. And the main goal was to make them easy and fun, okay? So easy to learn, fun to learn, easy to remember. Try to keep it very simple for the students, okay? And then as, you know, education evolved and, you know, certain trends have came in, uh, we developed hand in hand. And hand in hand, we're trying to focus on giving the students the tools to become 21st century learners. Okay, so there was a lot of talk of the 21st century skills and kind of making the students, you know, prepared for the 21st century and what it entails in the future. Okay? So things like global awareness, um, CLIL, which is content learning, and having the 21st century skills. Uh, with, you know, the four C's, you know, collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking. Okay, so those were some of the focuses in the Hand in Hand uh, series. And with Let's Smile, we're kind of focusing a bit more on the linking, okay? So with the content, we're kind of taking things from both of the previous series, but we want to add more linking with the language targets, okay? So not only linking each lesson together, like a uh, that happens across each of our course books, but also linking them to other school subjects and the world. And when I talk about the world here, um, it's a little different from what we're talking about with the world in hand in hand with the global awareness. Um, we're trying to link it to the world uh, in the like kind of immediate world of the students. Okay, so not so much the world, you know, outside of the country or outside of their city, but kind of more in their immediate kind of world, okay? in their immediate reality. So kind of linking it that way. All right. And so in terms of book level, um, so these are the levels of Smart English and Hand in Hand. Uh, with Let's Smile, the newer book, uh, we are keeping it 
closer to the level of smart English, but we are taking the content more from hand in hand. Okay, so it's kind of essentially a little bit combining, but still, you know, having its own kind of uh, features and its own kind of um, presentation. Okay. So with the components, all of our uh, course book series, of course, as you can see, I have kind of set up behind me. We have the student book, we have a workbook, and the teacher's manual. And our teacher's manual does contain a lot of resources for you as a teacher, trying to make it as easy as possible for you to, you know, pick up the book and teach it right away. So it comes with lesson plans, comes with worksheets, comes with tests. So you don't... Um, you don't have to kind of, uh, you know, build those from, from scratch, essentially. Uh, when I first started teaching in Korea, I didn't, I didn't actually receive my teacher's manual the first week. So a lot of things I was making myself. So I had to kind of make my own tests, make my own worksheets and all this when, you know, they're all readily available. Okay. So we have also the flashcards, you know, uh, class tools that you can use as well as online and digital support. So if you haven't heard of the eSmart class platform that we have, uh, there's some extra you know, online support, uh, extra practice for the students. Um, if you go to our YouTube page, which we'll link later, um, I made a kind of introduction series to our eSmart class to kind of help um, new, newer teachers use the platform, okay? And just briefly here, want to go through the lesson walkthrough. So before I get into all of these activity ideas and all of these project ideas, <clears throat> it's good to know uh, what we're looking at in the book, especially for those that haven't seen the inside of some of these course books. So uh, with Smart English, so starting with the first course book, you know, each lesson starts off with the kind of conversation and kind of the introduction of the, of the unit. So most, uh, most all course books usually start out with this. You know, you don't want to um, push the students too much on, the, um, on the, the first lesson or the first, I guess, yeah, first lesson of the unit. Um, just getting them kind of introduced to the language that they're going to be listening or learning um, throughout the lesson. Okay, so that's the first part here. And then we go into a bit of the practice, all right? And then keep going through. So this previous practice was more of a listen and repeat part. And then now we're going to more listen and chant and a bit more of the conversation portions, okay? So we're talking about very easy and fun um, for the focus. You can see a lot of these activities are quite simple for the students to kind of use, especially those beginning learners, okay? So we have these, you know, ask and answer, so the students can work with their partner, you can ask and answer, practice, and then we have a link and review. So this is the lesson, this is lesson two. If you can kind of see these uh, small letters here, um, the link and review, it's taking things, of course, from lesson one and reusing them in lesson two, um, but we're, Kind of taking the vocabulary or sentence structures from those previous lessons and putting them into the newer um, newer sentence structures all right and some extra practice as well so that's smart english okay then we have the review unit so every every two units we'll go into a review unit which is the jump up so we'll get some comic comics for the students, and then it's kind of the similar setup, kind of go for the listen and repeat and a bit of the practice um, that they have seen in previous, um, previous lessons. So it can, kind of keeps that uh, continuity, right? So it's not presenting too much of a challenge. It's just presenting, you know, some review things and um, kind of similar uh, targets, okay? So then we go into hand in hand. So hand in hand, again, the way we structure our books, always have that introduction kind of conversation with the students, let them know and give them a preview of what they're going to be practicing um, in the unit. And then same here, we have more listen and sing. So getting those chants, especially with the younger learners that I've seen, 
songs and chants, you know, kind of, you know, just like when we listen to music, we get that song stuck in our head. So even with the students, you know, they listen to the song and chants from the book. And, you know, sometimes you might hear them, you know, kind of humming it or saying it to themselves outside of class if they listen to it, you know, enough times. Okay. And then we have a listen, right? Kind of more practice. Okay. And then with hand in hand, a few of the little bit of the differences. So we kind of focus more in on the words and grammar here. And then, um, you know, have them practice it. And then more practice with listen and repeat. And kind of going through again with the kind of 21st century stuff that we talked about. So we're in hand in hand, we're looking at the global awareness. So we're taking, you know, things from around the world and other cultures and bringing it into um, the lesson. So here we have different colors. So the students are learning colors. So we look at other countries' flags, okay? And then the students can practice it and see which colors they see, as well as, you know, practice it here. And again, unit link. So more linking as well here, okay? And then for hand in hand, the review units are, are uh, school links. So they change to school links. So in this unit here with traditional clothes, they, you know, we link it to the social studies subject. Okay? So we're taking what they learned and putting it into another subject using English this time. Okay? And finally, with Let's Smile, so the final lesson walkthrough here. Again, we have a bit of an introduction at the beginning. So listen and point, looking at um, this one here, we have jobs. And so again, more practice and chance. So we kind of keep the same structure, but we change the content a bit um, as we go through. So most course books will always have these first two kind of um, introduction and practice in the beginning. And then as we go through, have more listen and repeats here, and then a little bit more chance and some games and activities inside the book. And we start connecting it. So here's where we see the kind of overlap with hand in hand. So we have the, the school subject here. So this is the kind of CLIL, the content learning that we bring in. But this time now it doesn't have its own separate um, lesson. It's kind of baked into the unit, okay? And then some more unit link. And uh, with linking to the world, so like I talked about, it's linking to the world around them. So with these world links, you know, it can include a little bit more of content learning, but also at the same time presenting things that, you know, the students will see um, outside of their class, like in their immediate, um, you know, reality in the immediate world. So either in the classroom or at home or like around their town, like we try to focus on this kind of world, all right? Okay, so was there any, I'll take a quick pause here. Was there any questions or things that you guys um, had any questions about? Smart class free for students. Um, students can access the eSmart class platform. Um, you need to, um, you will need to create the students accounts for them for eSmart class, okay? All right, yeah. so I'll take some more questions at the end. I do want to get through these teaching tips and a lot of these activities for you guys today. So for tip one, so a lot of these are kind of, kind of be general teaching tips and applying them using our course books. Um, so for tip one, what I try to kind of uh, get the students to do at the beginning or try to get the teachers to do um, it's to get to know and activate the student's background knowledge, okay? So sometimes in class or with your students, um, they come in with some prior knowledge of English already, right? Have some prior knowledge of English already. So we want to try to tap into that. What do they already know? So what this does for the teacher is, you know, it helps us as teachers focus on things, you know, that they don't already know, okay? So let's take a look. So with background knowledge, you know, learn what the students already know, and now you can kind of shift focus on things that they don't know yet, 
So if they already know the word lion, all the students know lion, you can kind of expand a bit. You don't have to, you know, that kind of goes into with my next slide here because I'm doing animals. So if the students already know the word lion, you know, you can kind of expand a bit. So these are some ways that you can activate, activate the student's background knowledge. Just something as simple as a picture walk, um, showing a video, of course, related to the subject and ask questions about it, okay? Ask questions about it. So using the book, so especially right now with online uh, lessons, using an ebook or like, you know, an ebook to show the students online are, um, are kind of the essential way to kind of conduct your class right now. So if you show the book to the students on the screen, they look at it, you can ask them pictures or ask them pictures, ask them questions about the pictures, okay? So it can be very general, okay? So if I were to ask you guys, if we're looking at this picture here, what do you see in the picture? What do you see in the picture? What are, what are some things in this picture? And this kind of opens it up to anything. So you just want, just want to get the students to talk, okay? So it's like, oh, what do you see? I see a bear, okay? I see, you know, some students might look at, you know, different feelings that they see on the, on the you know, characters' faces, okay? So what do you, what do you see? Okay, so you can get them that started that way. And then if you want to expand, like I talked about, so you can go in and try to find a different image. So here we're talking about animals, maybe talking about the zoo. Try to find a, a more expanded zoo, an expanded picture. And then now that you have this picture, um, you, can, you can ask the students the same questions and then kind of highlight different things in here, okay? So like, if I'm asking you, so if you are my students, what, what animals, what animals do you see in this zoo? What animals do you see in this zoo? So if you can write in the chat, can you tell me uh, what are some of these animals that you see? See if you can get any of the more uh, difficult animals. Yeah, some wild animals. We see lions and gorillas. So let me use my, my drawing tool here. Does anyone know what this animal here is? Circling it in blue. We see a bison. Where is the bison? Over here on the side. So does anyone know what this one here is in blue that I circled? Apron, okay. Ant eater, very good, very good. Armadillo, no, I don't think that's an armadillo. Armadillo usually has like the big, uh, big body armor on it. But see, if someone guessed an armadillo in your class, you would be surprised and like, oh, you know the word armadillo, right? So um, this is the kind of things that you would activate, you know, their, their background knowledge, okay? Taper, and a taper. Okay, so uh, taper or an anteater might be one over here, okay, aardvark, <laughs> okay, very good. So these are kinds of ways to get the background knowledge for the students, okay. So if they knew anteater, if they knew taper, if they knew armadillo, you could take those words and then you can still use them later on, okay, because if the student said it and say maybe some other students didn't know it, you know, you can extend the vocabulary a little bit to something new that they learned and then kind of include it in later activities as well, okay? So tip two that I always try to do with my students um, is pre-teaching the vocabulary at the start, at the start of each unit. Yeah, <laughs> so it can be a learning experience for the teacher as well, Rhonda, right? <laughs> So we have uh, pre-teaching the vocabulary at the start of each unit. Um, I do this because it kind of helps the students to understand quicker as we get through. Um, so, you know, if, this, if you're not pre-teaching vocabulary or 
um, teaching vocabulary later on, um, the students can, you know, get a little bit confused and then you kind of have to throw in explanations kind of sporadically throughout the, uh, throughout the lesson and it kind of disrupts your flow even, you know. If you built this whole lesson plan, but then the students, you know, you forgot to teach a little bit of the vocabulary at the beginning, I just feel like it makes it more smooth, it makes it smoother to go through, okay? So even before that, so even with our books, we do give you a list. You know, a lot of course books give you that list of vocabulary. These are the vocabulary that we're focusing in the lesson. But as a teacher, I would recommend still go through the lesson, you know, um, you know, sometimes some books will, like in ours, we have, you know, stories or chants or, or um, various other uh, kind of parts of the unit. And there might be a word that the students might not know or might not remember. So you can use the, this pre-teaching of vocabulary to also review some words or um, to add on to the list of vocabulary that they already have. Okay, so I'm taking hand in hand. So this is a unit from hand in hand. So we have unit two from book three. So we're doing kind of uh, things I do in the afternoon, okay, kind of activities. So I would go in and kind of, I would always make a PPT with the vocabulary. Um, you can use flashcards as well, like for in person. Um, with online teaching, I think uh, making a PPT for the vocabulary might be a bit more effective and you can easily get the student's attention a bit more. I'm always like to have fun with these, so I'd always use kind of gifts. Kind of use any possible way to keep the student's attention, right? So I always tried to use gifts like this. So just asking you guys, so something you can do in class, ask the students, have them guess. So what, what vocabulary word do you think this is? What vocabulary word do you think this is? Think, okay. Studying hard, study. Tired, <laughs> bored. Good. So remember our unit, our unit is on, you know, things that they do in the afternoon. So kind of activities. So those are good guesses. So it's the one thing that students kind of hate the most. Adam got it. Okay, people got it now. Very good. It's do homework. Very good. Do homework. Okay, and then we can keep going through. And then we have this word here. So we have do homework. So eating, very close. But eat what? Eat dinner. Very good. Eat dinner. This one here. Read, good. Let's read, read a book. Very good, read a book. Here we go through here. So it could be breakfast. Jane, very good, Jane, have a snack. Here we go, this one, have a snack. And then we have here. Watch TV, very good. And another thing I'd like to add, especially you know, with these when they're learning vocabulary, a lot of people kind of, a lot of teachers are curious about whether or not you should use the native language when you're introducing vocabulary. Um, I always did when I taught, just because it links, it, it really kind of solidifies the vocabulary for the students a lot more. Okay. So usually, like I would have the English one here, and then at the bottom, I would have, for my students at the time, you know, the Korean, the Korean translation. But I wouldn't translate, you know, all the time in class. I only use it, you know, for the vocabulary or for the sentences, just to get the students in that mindset of this is what it means. Okay. Of course, you can change it depending on, you know, the level of the students, but I find it, it's, it can only help the students understand. And as long as they're practicing the English part of it, 
and not too much of their native language, then, you know, it's not too big of a detriment, in my opinion. Okay. So yeah, watch TV. And the last one, which we all, or some of you are getting ready to do out in, uh, out in the uh, Latin America countries, go to bed. Okay, very good. So that's kind of how I would introduce the, uh, the vocabulary, right? So <clears throat> sometimes I would have them have a worksheet. They would have a worksheet and then they would kind of write down either the word in extra time or they would write the translation of what it means just so they have that reference. So whether it's in their notebook or you have like a vocabulary list and they kind of write it down, um, you can do it that way. Uh, do I put GIFs into a PPT? Yeah, I do. If I just go into Google or whichever search engine, look, uh, look for some GIFs and then kind of copy paste it in there for the students. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I talked about before, you can add any words um, that, you, that you think they might not know. So if I'm looking through this unit, it's like, oh, my students might not remember what before and after was. So maybe that's something that... Um, that's something that I can uh, add in as a review as I'm going over vocabulary, okay? So just something like that, or even further, oh no, yeah, it's kind of the same, like, it, like here I had kind of extra words in here. It wasn't just one vocabulary word, so it's kind of teaching them what each part of these mean. So like, uh, yeah, kind of similar nuances as well with the language that you have to worry about. Like, um, go to bed means to sleep. So if, say in like Korean, um, go, go is the word kada, and then bed chimde. But, you know, the translation wouldn't be, you know, chim, chimde kada wouldn't be the translation. It would just be go to sleep. So just kind of getting them to think about the differences in the language as well. Like there's different terms for, you know, the same thing as well. Okay. So tip three. So now we're going to get into some activities. So tip three, um, it is important in addition to getting that background knowledge is to warm up the class. Okay. Um, in some previous webinars, I talked about, uh, you know, having a step-by-step -step for planning a lesson. Uh, warming up the class is usually number one. Um, I always think about it as flipping a switch, okay? So in most, you know, most cases, our students are coming into English class, having had two, three, four periods of class in their native language, okay? So it's hard for us as teachers to expect them to, you know, come into English class and then with a snap of the finger, like, now you have to speak in English. Well, for me, you know, for those that, you know, have learned another language, you know, it's, it takes time for you to be able to kind of swap languages at will. And especially with students, at, you know, at the elementary, young age, they can't really flip the, flip the switch that quickly, especially if they're beginning learners. So using the warm-up activity, using some kind of uh, activity to kind of transition them, transition them into the English class, okay? Something very easy and something fun, trying to keep them engaged in the class, okay? So I have different activities um, that I've used and like to use with my students. So I'm going to kind of do them with you as well. So some of them that I have here, so make the longest word, make the most words, so getting them to, just getting them to think in English, okay? Then here we have, what do they have in common? Odd one out and fast five, okay? So these are a few warm-up activities that you can use. So let's do some of these. So here, so making the longest word or making the most words, uh, this game is called Boggle. Um, usually you'd have to have all the letters connected to make words. Um, for beginning learners, obviously you can uh, adapt it. So what I would do with my students, I just let them, you know, these are your letters that you can use, make some words. And then I would give them a bit of a time limit, right? So I'd give them points for the most, like give, I'd have them do it in groups as well. Um, have them, you know, make as many words as they can and then give a bonus point for any team that um, can make the longest word, right? So 
giving it to you guys in the chat. What are some words that you can make with these letters and see if there's anyone that can make uh, a long word? Okay, T, good. T E A, good. What other words can you make? Just to drink some water really quick. Thin, very good. T H I N. Late, L A T E. Taller. Ah, so another rule. Thank you for putting taller in there. You can only use each letter one time. Okay? You can only use each letter one time. So if you can see here, I put two A's. That means you can use two A's. But with taller, there's only one L, so you can only use that once. Okay, so I'm looking for some long words. So we have friend, so we have six letters. Through, T-H-R-O. Oh, there's no U, so through doesn't work. Sorry, Stephanie. Stain, bite, health, favorite. Very good, Jane, favorite. So I saw if you recommending a page. This one you can easily make on PPT like this. So you can just make a table, however many letters you want to make, and then just write in the, write in the letters. So favorite looks like the longest one that I've seen in chat. I have one a little bit longer, a little bit longer than favorite. So these were some of the other words that uh, treat, T-R-E-A-T, -E very good. Fish, F-I-S-H, good. So these were some of the words that I looked and found. Trade, dates, and I beat you by one letter, favorites. <laughs> There's an S there. All right, so now going on to the next one. Uh, what do they have in common? So this is kind of, kind of like a, um, kind of like a riddle, riddle for the students. So I have these things here. So you need to kind of guess, guess what they have in common. So what common word do these all have? Okay. So number one, boxing, wedding, circus, ear. What is a word that would be in common? with all of these. For number one, song, wedding song, music, boxing music, but ear music, maybe a little bit. Huh? Adam, very good, Adam got it. So number one is ring, ring. Adam was the first one. Ring, so we have a boxing ring, wedding ring, circus ring, and an earring. Very good. Okay, let's look at number two. Oh, Jane, very quick. Okay, number two is the spoon. Good, teaspoon, soup spoon, tablespoon, dessert spoon. Good. Number three, Jane, oh, Jane is on it. Jane and Rhonda, very good. A towel, kitchen towel. Tea towel, bath towel, beach towel. Very good. You guys are very quick and awake. I know it's uh, still a little bit in the morning, almost lunch. Jane, did you search these uh, search these answers? <laughs> and the last one good is house. Very good. House, greenhouse, lighthouse, warehouse, and a boathouse. Very good. Love word games, good, good. I was only joking. Yeah, very good, guys. So these are kind of the things that you can do. So these were the answers, okay? So you can kind of uh, do that with the students, kind of a warm up, just getting them to think. Again, we're just kind of think in English. You can do it in groups or individually, okay? So that's a what's in common kind of game. Fast five, so this is more word games, so Jane. <laughs> so you can do this with the students as well. So this one here. So brands of cars. So this one here is kind of a speed game with the students. So just kind of think of, you know, five things. Give them a topic and have them think of five things um, quick. Okay. 
So with brands of cars, can you write out five brands of cars? First one to, you know, name five. So usually in, this, in class, I'd either have the students raise their hand or stand up or, or write something and write down five. So not just one, so five. So Jane, there you go. Toyota, Benz, Mercedes, Nissan, Ford. Okay. Ford, BMW, Hyundai, Mitsubishi, GM. Yeah. Audi, Hyundai. Good, so these were the ones I had. Honda, Lexus, BMW, Maserati, and Tesla. Maybe some people have their dream cars. You can do a little, little bit of psychology which with, with cars they think of first, or if there's some kind of memory with them. Okay, so that's brands of cars. And then you can go into countries in Africa. So I'm trying to test you guys. See if you can get some African countries. Who's good at geography? Kenya, South Africa, and Angola, Morocco. How many is that in that stream? Ghana, Botswana, Mozambique, good. Nigeria, Kenya, very good. So Congo, South Africa, Egypt, Ivory Coast, and Cameroon is what I thought of. And even Fast Five, like these can be one of those, you can either change to, um, change to a kind of telepathy game a little bit if you put the students in groups. So the teacher, you can personally pick five things and then you can get the students to kind of guess oh, what, what five things did the teacher guess and then adopt it that way, kind of get the little bit more competitive like as a class and give the students a point each, you know, for the ones that they got the same as you. Okay, And then one last one. Planets. Who knows their planets? Venus, Earth, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter. Remember Pluto's no longer a planet? <laughs> oh no, the moon's not a planet. <laughs> Neptune, we're missing one. Which one has the big ring? Saturn, very good, Lucy. Good, so we have these five there. Okay, so those are some warm-up activities, all right? Or, oh, I have one more, all right. Yeah, Karina, Pluto has been named no longer a planet, apparently, <laughs> quite a few years back. So there's only eight planets. So now odd one out. So this one here, you can take however many images you want and then kind of have the students talk about how they're different, which one's different, or even you can flip it and how they are the same. So I have three jobs here. Uh, which one would be the odd one out? And then kind of ask them why. So Romy says the chef, Rhonda also says the cook. So why, why is the cook different? Why is that one the odd one out? What's, why is everyone picking the chef and the cook? Not a medical profession. Good, they don't work in a hospital. Good. What if I said this one was the odd one out? I think that, well, a student will raise their hand. Actually, this one's the odd one out. Oh, where's a hat? Minhi, good. So you, the students can think about other things, okay? Other things are the reasons why. She's wearing a hat, okay? This person has glasses. This person has red hair. That's what I was actually going for, red hair. In previous times, they said this one was the odd one out because she's not holding anything. <laughs> these other two people, these other two jobs are holding something. This person's not holding something. Okay, She's wearing a skirt. Okay, Very good. And then you can add another thing here. So now we have fruits. We have apples, oranges, and watermelons. These are some flashcards from Hand in Hand. Which one's the odd one out here? The watermelon. There's only two watermelons. Good. <laughs> the number of watermelons and the size. The watermelon's bigger. Can anyone think of a reason why? This one, 
as I was making this PowerPoint or making this slide an activity, I was trying to think of something more uh, out of the box. Let me say apples because you can eat them without peeling them. True. You don't see a lot of people biting into a, a watermelon without slicing it. <clears throat> so I thought of apples because red is the only primary color. <laughs> the other ones are secondary colors. And we eat if we were on the same, same wavelength there with the colors. Yeah, you can, if, if you had so, a student actually say that one, I would be very surprised. They must be very uh, artistic students. <laughs> so you can see, you know, how, you can even see how different your students think about it if they're depending on their reasoning. Okay, so these are some warm-up activities. I think that was my last warm-up activity. Okay. So now we have some class activities. So this is looking more at things out of the book and some extension projects that you can do with the students. Um, these can be, I'm trying to adapt them both for something that you can do online with the students as well as in person. So for those that are back in the classroom. So with some things, so we're taking here, taking smart English. So at lunch, we're getting some food. So some activities you can do kind of grocery shopping. So if the students, of course, this is some prior things. These would be some activities after you, at the end of some lesson. So this, if you are planning to do this activity here, just as a, as a side note, <clears throat> I have a lot of words here. I would pre-teach these words if I'm going to use them, okay, obviously. So since, you know, I knew that you guys know these words, this is the kind of list of things that I've found. So these, let's go grocery shopping, all right? So we're looking at at lunch, we have all these foods. Let's go grocery shopping so we can cook these at home, okay? Let's, let's cook. So the first one here, let's go grocery shopping to make pizza. So let's make our grocery list. What things here would you pick up to buy a pizza? Or to buy pizza, to make pizza. Okay, so we have a big list here of words. So what are we putting on our grocery list? And then you can also see what kind of pizza students like as well at the same time. Flour, very good. If we're gonna make it from scratch. Flour, oil, pepperoni, mushroom cheese. Good. If we're getting the flour, there's another important thing in there that you might need because we're not just gonna throw flour in the bowl, right? What else are we going to mix it with? I don't know if you see it. Don't forget the milk, <laughs> milk and eggs. I don't think I put eggs in here, but if we're making the dough, of course you're gonna need some milk, salt as well. So a lot of these things, technically you could just take all of these <laughs> and put them on a pizza. Is there anyone, any attendee here that likes anchovy pizza? I had a, one of my uh, roommates in, in college was very big on uh, anchovy pizza. So we always got half and half. You'd get half anchovy and I'd get my, my half. It makes the pizza a lot more, um, a lot more salty, I'll say. Okay, so that's pizza. So we can keep going. So now about sandwiches. So sandwich, we're going, probably going for bread. Um, maybe some ketchup and some lettuce. Cheese, good. Maybe some bacon, get a BLT, bacon, lettuce, and tomatoes. <laughs> Beef, again, another thing that we can kind of, kind of put, um, put all of these on the list. If you were gonna make your own bread, you can still go with the flour and milk and salt. Oh, where's the avocado, Rhonda, you got me. I should have put avocado. Avocado is uh, wonderful. It's getting close to lunchtime. I'm getting hungry too. Talking about sandwiches, might go to Subway. <laughs> okay, and then last one here, spaghetti. So another, another uh, vocabulary word we had was spaghetti. So here we can get the cheese, we can get the tomato, some onions, some olives. If you like to put beef, beef in the... Uh, 
in the spaghetti sauce, maybe some bacon, uh, some mushrooms, and then we got the noodles, of course. Okay. Garlic, avocado on spaghetti, maybe. <laughs> some garlic. All right, okay, let's, let's skip through this because my stomach's starting to rumble a bit. So follow-up activity. So what we can do, so this is something that we can get the students thinking about. Now we can get the students to maybe create their own recipe or in groups, have them develop their own restaurant menu, okay? So these were just some images I found online. So these were some uh, restaurants that they did. You can expand it. So restaurant menu, and then they can kind of, uh, kind of make their own restaurant. They can design it like this uh, student had done. So, or this group had done, I think there's, it looks like there's three students. So they made their own kind of uh, seafood restaurant. Yeah. So they have pineapple juice on their menu. Very good at art. I, I don't, this wasn't my art, I'm not claiming this. <laughs> so this is just something that the students can do. You can find out more about your students as well, especially with these art activities, which students are good at art, and kind of get to know them a little bit more, okay? And then finding a menu. So this is uh, an online thing that you can do. For those that, um, that have heard of the, the site Canva, Canva, you can go on and kind of find the, uh, make their own menu like this. Very simple, it's a simple menu if they don't wanna do the uh, art. So this one here, I made my own menu of some of the foods that I like and drinks that I like. So kind of keeping it in line with uh, some of the things that were uh, on the menu or on the, uh, in the book for the vocabulary. So instead of just chicken, I went with the Korean fried chicken. Okay? So it's one of my favorites. So we have the soy sauce chicken, sweet and spicy, original garlic. I love tacos being from California. Um, I could probably just, you know, Mexican food is one of, or yeah, what well, Mexican food is probably near the top top of my favorite foods and pizza noodles and just having fun with it um, if you're doing the the menu you know you can have them explain it actually thank you Doris <laughs> good prices so I'm trying to uh, you know I take for granted sometimes the prices you know being in Korea knowing you know foods from other countries are a bit more expensive in California there was always you know the one dollar tacos so I try to keep it uh, more reasonable in my restaurant, bring in the customers, you know. Okay, so that's uh, if you were doing a food, a food uh, lesson, that would be some activities that you can do. Now we're looking at some travel or vacation lessons. So a lot of these, you know, are, are topics that quite frequently come in in different, uh, different books. So here I did this with, I actually have done this with my students before. Uh, we did kind of a like travel expo, kind of a travel expo with the students. So you can either, you can put that, we put them in groups, uh, gave them certain countries, and then we actually made them make posters and brochures, um, you know, give them the class time to actually create this um, with their group. Again, yeah, but I'm putting the links, I'm trying not to take credit for this. Uh, the, so just kind of putting them in groups, making a brochure, and then having another class devoted just for them to kind of sell their travel package. So like they would make, you know, this is what you're going to do in the country, and then they would try to sell sell their brochure, sell their travel tour to their to the other groups. So they would have one student that would, you know, stay at their table and would be the one that... Um, that would go out and, uh, and, and explain and sell the, the tour to the other groups, and they would kind of rotate around. So if this group had Egypt and then another group had Canada, you know, one student would try to sell Canada, the rest of them would go and kind of uh, explore the other, other groups and also practicing their conversation as well at the same time. Okay. So kind of a trans travel package here. Okay. And then another one for places around town. Okay, so this one, you know, talking about different places, different stores, even directions. Okay, it's across from the park. It's next to the pet shop. 
um, simple kind of conversation practice, map, at, map activities. Um, so you can find a map, you can make your own map, kind of simple ones, just have different shapes and then put um, labels on each of them. And just, you know, have the students have a conversation on it, okay? So how, how I've done it before, um, I would put the students in pairs. So student A would get one worksheet, student B would get one worksheet. And then I would cover different parts. Okay? I'd cover different parts of the map. And the students would have to ask each other for directions. Okay? Ask each other for directions. So of course, for this student, I would have a list of the places they need to find. Okay? A list of the places they need to find. So here, elementary school. So student A would ask student B, oh, where is the elementary school? Student B would find the elementary school. So here it is down here and give them a starting point, and then they would give the practice their directions. So like go straight one block and turn right, and go straight, you know, go straight, cross the river, <laughs> go straight three blocks, cross the river, it's on your left. Okay? So you can have them practice that way as well. Okay? Um, another thing, uh, for those that saw, uh, we had kind of an expert series with kind of helping with, uh, Kind of online tools. So making a worksheet using PowerPoint, okay? Using PowerPoint. So this is definitely good for the online class and how to do it. Um, I made my own worksheet. <clears throat> so this is lesson 12. Hopefully I'm sharing this. Let me share it now. Can you see this new one? So this is lesson 12 or lesson 12, lesson 14 at lunch. So this goes together with that previous food, um, food unit that we were doing. So then I would go through and you would have the script ready and then you could put in the audio file, okay? So let me make sure, one second, that you can hear. Uh, well, I'm running a little bit out of time, so here. Oops. So let me know if you can hear this audio, hopefully, maybe. Oh no, looks like I can't click the audio. But usually you would have the audio here and then you put go into with the students. Oh, I think it's because I can't edit. So you go in and have the students listen to it and then they would drag and fill in the blank. Okay, so they would fill in the blank. So it listen to the audio, oh, I'm hungry, what? What sentence was next? Me too. So then they would drag me too and then put it here, okay? So it's taking some of the audio files from the book and then adding kind of an extra worksheet that the students can do, okay? And then going through all of these, listen to the audio and put the correct picture in the box. So this is kind of the audio that you would take, um, yeah, the yellow on top. Yeah, it's, it has to do something with the, uh, the account. So it's okay, but uh, I, I'm going to give you guys this uh, PowerPoint at the end as well, so you guys can play around with it and kind of listen to it firsthand. Um, so you play the audio again, and then the students um, has to, what's it called, has to uh, drag the picture, drag the picture to the correct box, okay? So they would go through here. So if number one was chicken, they would take this chicken picture and drag it into this box. And you can kind of have them go through and do each of these. And then uh, getting the students input. So what do they want for lunch? And then you give them a picture and the students comes in here and then they write their own answer. Okay? They want chicken for lunch. And then after they do all of that, um, if you guys are using Google Classroom or you just have a Google Drive set up for your students or any other program or resource, that allows the students to send you files. You can have them save, resave the uh, PowerPoint with their name and then upload it to say the Google Drive folder. Okay, you can do it that way. Okay, so that's kind of an extra worksheet that you can do with the students, especially on, for online classes. Okay. Now for some final general teaching tips. Sorry, I got a scratch, like very itch in my nose. So teaching tips. So things just to remember, especially during these times, remember that, you know, depending on how long your lessons are, 
your students are continually staring at a screen, okay? So if you have 30 to 40 minute lessons, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, you're get, trying to get the students' attention in some ways. You know, 40 minutes of looking straight at a screen, you know, for anyone, like I've tried my best to, in this one hour webinar to keep your guys' attention through, you know, different uh, visuals. So I tried to, you know, get this, the students to look at their screen somehow. Um, remember the different types of classroom interactions, uh, whether it's in class or online. Um, you know, a lot of times it's going to be like today, it's uh, teacher student. So like me as a presenter and you guys, I did try to get you guys to, um, try to get you guys to, you know, answer back at me and ask me questions as well to get that, get that interaction with you to kind of keep the, uh, <clears throat> keep the uh, attention there, the interest. And then student, student. Um, so with Zoom, if you're using Zoom for classes, utilize those breakout rooms to put them in groups, put them in pairs, depending on the size of your class. And um, you can have them interacting with each other. And then as a teacher, you can just go in and monitor them. Kind of gives you a break as well at the same time. And then just giving feedback. Okay? So utilizing what I call the sandwich method. Uh, so when you're giving feedback to your students, don't just go in on like, oh, you did this, 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 this wrong. Kind of like give them good points in between. It's like, oh, you did really well on the listening section. But I think, you know, you just need to improve a little bit on, you know, the, uh, the writing. Like, and once you, if you do this and this, then we could do well. But, you know, overall, you did, you know, you scored, you got, you know, 80% or 90%, just like this little bit, okay? So case by case, yeah, especially case by case, okay? And then when you do games and review stuff, um, always make sure that there's a purpose. Don't just play a game for the sake of playing a game. Um, make sure that you can adapt the language targets into the games that you're playing, okay? Be sure you know what, you know, what the game is fulfilling, fulfilling for your students, all right? And then as personal, as a teacher, um, think about how your class went, reflect on what you did. Um, you know, especially, you know, for a lot of us, teaching online is new to us. I know it can be very stressful, but just try to keep the mindset of, you know, as we're teaching, we're learning as well as teachers. It's not only our students that are learning, as teachers, we're learning how to become better teachers. So just looking back, um, especially if you're using Zoom, you can look back at, um, at the recordings of the, the classes if you're able to record them and kind of take notes and think about, you know, uh, was this activity effective? Do I need to alter it? Um, did I spend too much time on presenting vocabulary and just overall like um, how you did as a teacher kind of critiquing yourself? Um, if you have a group of teachers together, and you say you have a team, you can kind of share the things together and then uh, get their opinions as well, just utilizing your network of teachers. And then, like I talked about here, keeping notes, keep track of the things that went well in your class, what didn't go well, um, what, you need to, um, what you need to alter a little bit to make effective. Just keep a note of it. Um, if, obviously, if you can't keep mental notes well, just keep a diary, keep track of uh, kind of things um, that you think about. Because, uh, you know, when I was a teacher, just walking from one class to another or walking back to my, walking back to my office, I'd remember something. And then uh, by the time, you know, it came around to planning something, I, I would forget it. So I would, I'd need to write it down and keep note of uh, some of the changes that I wanted to do for my classes. Okay. Hey, so there was a lot of things, a lot of things that I shared today. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, um, that is my email there that you can contact me at. Um, let me quickly check. There was, oh, there's no questions in the Q&A. Looks like my colleagues got to them for you guys. Um, I will be giving you guys the, the link. Um, if one of my colleagues can share the link for the... There, yep, so the survey link, again, like I talked about, even as teachers, we can um, get back some feedback. Um, even as a presenter, I'd like to get your guys' feedback. So with the survey link, 
please let me know or let us know what we can do to improve any future future topics on webinars that you guys like. Um, for the PPT, Sue had just put it in the chat, so hopefully it doesn't get pushed up too much. Um, you can download the um, download the PPT, my my webinar PPT, in addition to that worksheet that I had was all is also in that folder. Okay, for those. Okay, so we do have uh, certificates available. So we give the certificates out. We try to keep the legitimacy of our certificates. So please understand why we don't kind of give them out uh, right away. So we try to keep it legitimate and personalized to you guys. So that's why we ask that you contact our partners or us to get your certificate. We want you to get your name on there and uh, try to kind of prevent, you know, having a, a mass spread of the certificate. So we want to keep it kind of exclusive just for you guys, all right? So if you guys can contact our partners and, um, and uh, get them to get you guys' certificates. Um, if after a certain amount of time, they're, they're, usually, they're usually quite quick on the turnaround. So if you, if you don't get your certificates, say within a week or so, um, contact us or contact us on Facebook. So I'm gonna leave this here. So also our social media. Um, you can contact us on Facebook as well if you don't get it within a certain time. Um, we will kind of help you guys and get it through. There has been a lot of cases where our partners have actually sent out the certificates, but with technology and you know the internet being as it is, it just gets lost somewhere. So there was proof shown that, okay, we did actually send the certificate to this attendee. However, the attendee showed that they didn't get it. So there are cases of that. So please be patient and um, let us know if there's any troubles. Um, yeah, please follow us on YouTube. There's also another one. Uh, we are also becoming more active on Instagram. So if uh, those that are looking for, Inst uh, that are more active on Instagram, we do post, are starting to post more on Instagram as well. So feel free, I'll probably need to edit this slide as well to include our uh, Instagram account. So thank you guys so much. Um, I will go back up to the contact info. This information will also be included in the follow-up email that Zoom will be sending out tomorrow. Um, so if you missed the survey link as well, that will be included there. But that is all I had for you guys today. Um, I hope I was some help for you. And uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to contact me. If you need me to elaborate more, on some of these activities, I would gladly do that for you, all right? So, thank you guys so much. Um, we will be having um, more webinars next month, and that schedule will be coming out soon. So be sure to follow us on social media again and uh, look out for those, and we will all see you next month at our next webinar. So thank you guys so much. You guys are wonderful, and I will see you next time. Stay safe. Hope you all are well. And uh, thank you all. Be safe. Have a good evening. And let's get some lunch for those that are in Asia. And in Latin America, buenas noches. Thank you. Goodbye.